I'm starting a brand new project. This time I'm taking an Ikea cabinet and I'm turning it into a glorious bar cart. So I just set up the cabinet myself. It's bigger than I anticipated, but it fits in the space perfectly. I'm gonna be cutting out massive holes in the doors and then replacing them with cane. I'll be adding new handles and I'm adding on 10 inch legs so it's gonna be standing a lot higher. I built this whole thing because I need to see how it's put together so I know exactly how I can customize it. For instance, when I put this together I found out these aspects do not need to be there and I'm gonna figure out how to take them out without damaging the piece because the backing is gonna look so much better without it. And then I could see what the backboard looks like. It is not looking good, so I want to change that too. Now I'm starting by cutting out the holes and I'm doing my little pencil trick to get the perfect curve. You take a piece of string, put it right in the center, and then it creates the perfect circle when you move it around. I'm about to cut out the oval from the cabinet doors. You see how beautiful that you see it? And if you consider, like, how am I supposed to cut this out? You can't use a saw because you just need the center part cut. And so a trick is you just take a drill, you drill out a big enough starting hole anywhere on the line. And then I'm going to use my handy dandy jigsaw that I use for a lot of my projects. Use protective eyewear and ideally you wouldn't be in your living room on the floor, but you just gotta do what you gotta do. I did it! My beautiful oval things are cut out. I should do a project using these. They're so cute. Like a sign or a pill. So now that I cut those out, I'm going to sand the insides of these so that they're smooth. And I should have remembered to probably wear a mask while I was using the jigsaw, but Let's do this. Just do some light sanding on all of the edges on the inside and on this side as well. I figure out that this part isn't necessary, so I take it off because it's gonna look a lot better when it's just smooth. I remembered that I have a bunch of wallpaper samples that I've just had in storage. And so I went through them and I picked out the best pattern that I want to be the backing of my bar cart. So this is peel and stick wallpaper, so it has a sticky adhesive backing. So I just cut it to size and I peel off a part of it and then I just start placing it all down. There is a little piece of wood that comes with the backing to help secure it in. And so I'm taking this a step further. I am also applying wallpaper to that piece of wood so it slots in perfectly and it matches like a puzzle piece. So here I am testing it out, putting it back into the bar cart, making sure everything's perfect and it's great. I'm in my spooky garage because I'm getting the paint colors for this project and we have a plethora of paint colors because uh, I was passing by a hardware store and they were going out of business so look at what we have. These were all 50 or 75% off so I have so many color options and then more in here what to choose. We tested out our spray paint before committing and thank goodness we did because by this tester, we found out that we need to put primer down. And so I have this yellow thick opaque paint. I'm putting it down as the primer. That way you're not gonna see all of that wood grain and it's gonna look really smooth. So now that this paint is dried, I'm gonna do a light sanding so that it gets the texture really smooth. So for the final spray paint on the outside, it's gonna be glossy and perfect looking. And what I'm gonna do next is take this lavender spray paint and I'm painting the whole interior lavender to match the wallpaper that is in the backing. And then the outside of this is gonna be a sunrise yellow to maroon, like red, but the inside will be this lavender. See the little bits of this texture here and here, here. I'm doing a really fine sanding on it, so this is gonna be really smooth because I'm using glossy spray paint and all of this texture would just pop so much and this is gonna make it look really nice. That feels so smooth now. It might look like it's not smooth, but when you touch it, it's very smooth. So when the spray paint goes on, this is gonna be great. 
I don't think I showed off what the color gradient's gonna be. It's gonna start off with yellow. Then there's this orange. Then I have this kind of pinkish maroon and this dark maroon. So this is what it's going to look like. I'm using some wood feller because I'm gonna fill some mix. Oh my God, oh, oh. Okay, well, I'm gonna fill these NYX and I'm just going to apply this, let it dry, and then add some paint on top of it. I should have done this to begin with, but I guess I just didn't really notice them. Look at this, and so much better. And this spot too, look at that, fantastic. Now I'm just gonna do another coat of paint. Filling up all of the unsightly holes because I only am gonna have two shelves, one here and one there. And so I don't need all these holes. And once I fill it up, sand it down and do that final coat of purple spray paint, it's gonna look so good. It's not pretty, but it gets the job done. Okay, let's see how this goes. That's, that's pretty. It's so pretty. Oh my God, you're beautiful. Okay, oh my God, it looks so good. I'm so happy about it. Do I have, ooh, cute, cute, cute. Oh my God, I'm really, really happy. How adorable. So the outside is all gonna be spray painted a different color, it's gonna be a gradient, but when you open the cabinet, you're gonna be surprised by this and you're gonna have no idea that it's gonna be this beautiful periwinkle lavender. Oh my gosh, I'm really happy. So next up, I'm considering painting the two shelves the same periwinkle so it's all sort of monochrome when you open it but i also could i also could paint these with one of the colors that will be in the gradient but i don't know i think that's risky how it'll turn out and, and if i ever decide to switch where the shelf is then maybe i would have picked the wrong gradient color you know like if i decide to move it down a few pegs or what <sighs> Maybe I'll just do purple, I don't know. I found some newspaper in the trash and I'm just using it to fill in the holes of my doors because I'm about to spray paint the gradient and I don't want that paint getting onto the inside of the purple I just so nicely did. For spray painting, you should be doing wide strokes and you should be holding it down only when you're painting and you don't hold down the whole time. So you hold it down, let it go, hold it down, let it go. Because you know, normally when you spray paint, you're just And that creates a lot of waste and also a lot of buildup on the ends. You're going over it twice, like right after each other. And that creates the wet spots and like the drippy spots. And that's when your spray paint is really bad. But you can hear when I'm spray painting the sound, it goes Because I'm letting it go at every turn. That's really the only way you learn is by doing. Feeling pretty good. But now onto the hardest part, which is the gradient, which I've never done before. I'm scared, but since this yellow just went so well, I'm hoping that the second half goes just as well. I decided to just do a two color gradient because I'm using this can as actually my inspiration for the paint job on the outside. It's just this yellow to a pretty maroon and it looks so simple and clean. So I'm just doing the two colors now and I'm trying this out and it goes horribly. I don't feel confident anymore. I am so frustrated, but I figured out why it went so badly. Look at the spray paint. You can see that the spray paint is coming out in kind of like a straight line. It's not being very misty and it's not going on how a gradient should go on. Okay, that did not go well. Absolutely. Ugh. It's super splotchy. It's not gonna be a gradient. And one of the issues is the nozzle on this. Do you see it has a lot of splatter that's not the most ideal 
pipe for getting an even spray. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pivot. We're gonna switch because this one's not doing the trick. It's beautiful, but look at look at the the spray. And I decide I'm just gonna use the spray paint to color the base of the cabinet. And then I'm gonna use a different spray can that has a better nozzle to do the mid-tones in the gradient. I wanna get in the nooks and crannies of this sort of door handle and because the yellow spray paint couldn't reach back here and so i need to open the door in order to get this angle so i just grabbed this it'll be my protector i'm going to spray paint it like this i feel so defeated about this project and now i'm scared i'm going to mess it up so i actually enlist the help of my boyfriend who is an artist with spray paint so lucky me i do have him to rely on and then his technique is really cool he goes back over it with the yellow to help blend the two colors together now i'm letting this be a little bit messy because i'm gonna add trim onto the back of this so it won't matter and i just cleaned up the edges there used to be yellow here and i spray painted with some tape to give this a nice clean line same with these sides and let's peel this off Ooh. i hope the rest of it i hope that this goes well oh oh i'm so happy with that oh my god yes that's beautiful okay i'm so excited for this step of the process it's really coming together this is the cane i'm gonna use i've never tried caning anything before so i'm learning along the way i feel i feel good about it so i'm about to soak this in warm water for 30 minutes so it absorbs the water and that way when it dries out it's gonna make it a lot more taut and tight after installing it so let's see how that goes i got this wall trim it's flexible uh pvc wall trim so it's made out of plastic well that's why i can bend it like so so it'll go around the curve of like the curve of the cane this is not necessary but it's just for me it'll make it more aesthetically pleasing on the inside so it won't just be like raw like cut up cane and then this is really cute i bought these custom little ginkgo leaf door knobs <laughs> i'm really excited about these this is a cocktail glass holder you install it facing upwards like this and then you can take a cocktail glass or a wine glass and you put it up in through here so the mouth hangs downwards. I bought these legs, they're gold. I wanted them to be extra tall because I don't wanna be like hunching over whenever using the cabinets. So these are 10 inch cabinet legs, which is taller than like a standard leg, I would think. So that is everything I'm about to install. Let's see how it goes. I like this crisp little line. You get a peak of the purple, which is what I wanted. Oh, amazing, I can't wait. I'm about to uninstall the doors so that it'll be easier for me to do all the rest of this. I just flipped over the cabinet. Here is the ugly base and this is the top. And I was testing out where I want these hanging mm, cocktail glass holders and I like where it is, so I'm gonna drill this in. But it comes with these cute little gold caps. So, I'm gonna cover up those ugly looking things. Now that it's wet, it has more bend, but it's still pretty stiff, it's hard to work with. You unfurl it. I'm taking my nail gun and I'm piercing it through the point where there's the most amount of reeve, so it has the most amount to latch onto. Starting with one side about every few inches. Okay, so now when you're doing it on the other side, you don't need to worry so much about getting it really, really tight because that's the reason why we soaked it in water. It absorbed water, so it's larger. And then once it dries out, it's gonna tighten up on its own. So don't kill yourself Woo! for making this really tight, but just get it so that it's like as tight as you can comfortably get it. I just go around the whole edge. After this, I'm gonna cut off the sides as much as I can, and then maybe use a box cutter to get real close. Then I'm gonna try to use this to finish it, but we'll see how that goes. 
Oh my god, it hurt my hands. You're hurting my hands. Why do things go wrong? Why? Why can't they just stop going wrong? That's fine. I already know how I'm gonna fix it. My door handle, little door pull, it comes with this hardware and it goes in the back of the door and it screws into the front of the door like this. But this guy is too short for my door. I could go to the hardware store, try and find a replacement for this that's a bit longer, but it has to be like a specific length and to fit this exact, this cabinet width. And so I thought of an easier way to deal with this. These are really light cabinets. So you don't have to pull very hard on them. I'm gonna use liquid nails. It's super, super strong glue. And I'm just gonna glue these onto the front and then I'll be able to pull them like just the same. It'll be totally fine. So I had to pivot and that is what happens when you try to do things yourself. I'm pretty confident it's gonna work. We'll see. Let's install these. I just put the backing back on. So I just slid back in the backing and then all I have to do is screw back in the doors and I am done. Oh, and, and the shelves. This is looking good. I have to wait until the cane is dry for me to finish and do the edges, but I don't know. Should I even do the edges? Who's gonna see it? Okay, I'll finish the edges. It looks really pretty when it's closed. I did it. Andrew did such a good job with the gradient. It doesn't feel like it's done yet because I've been working on it for so many days so it hasn't hit me, but the final look is so beautiful and I haven't done many Ikea hacks before. I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. I think it is so fun looking. The thing I like about Ikea furniture is because it's relatively cheap, it is not a big deal to change up the look. I absolutely am so happy with how it turned out. And I love this gradient that my boyfriend helped me with. This is my second ever Ikea hack. I think it went over really well. And I wonder what I should do next. I kind of want to build a dresser. So we'll see. Thank you for watching. Comment me only nice things. Don't say any mean things. Thank you.